I think and I do hope that my talk uh, I think fits very well in what has been said uh, before. My talk is divided into five, let's say, ideas, main ideas. Firstly, I start with this, what I call the good AI, and I think what has been addressed by Paolo Dario, uh, to understand that artificial intelligence supports us to understand and really to uh, realize uh, uh, um, sustainability in our world. The second point is I will talk about the deficiencies of the epistemologies uh, that we are still living in, but are going to overcome by this new uh, epistemology. Um, thirdly, I will talk about the new epistemology, which I understand to be a triangularly organized epistemology. So this is why I call it the epistemology of the third dimension. And fourth, I will talk about this enhancing and enabling effects of this uh, epistemology that will change not only from the philosophical point of view, our way we look into the world, but that will change completely our value system uh, uh, as we are going to reconceptualize our world. Um, I will try to keep it as quick as my, the precursors did and uh, because there are some core ideas and um, one could say it even perhaps quicker. So my paper is a reflection on how the basic of our epistemology changes in the face of the fact that artificial intelligence is now a constant partner in our world. Um, it helps to rescue lives. It helps to understand climate change. There are things we did not understand before. It helps us to survive with cancer, with so many things, yes. So the, uh, my focus is the reception of our reality will change um, as this new kind of epistemology that emerges from our uh, artificial intelligence gives us a different view of the world. It is, I would like to say, comparable to a life before the microscope, because now we are able to understand much more. And as I will see, we will overthrow the world of phenomena to go into a world of possibilities. And this is a crucial point to understand the new world of values and, uh, uh, and life. So but the decisive point, however, is also that via this technology, it is not one researcher who understands physics or something like that. As this technology enhances us all, that's the point. It has become a mass uh, uh, a technology, as Dario also said, with uh, uh, with Musk and so on. So, in this, is also a crucial point why it really changes our reality. So many people are not able, you know, to use and to think how it is built, but they use it, and why they use it, they change the view uh, of the world. So. The fundamentals, my second point, the deficiencies of the knowledge type that we have lived in, let's say the last <laughs> 2000 years, and what are these deficiencies and what is it what we are going to win with the new technology? So the fundamentals of the European knowledge culture can be traced back in short to Aristotle but it is, has never been limited to Aristotle, not to Europe. So what I call the Aristotelian organization of knowledge, I should call it the knowledge in the box. Why? So because this knowledge organization that has dominated for such a long time, our understanding is, so Aristotle's organization of knowledge is quite clear and it has a lot to do with evidences, you know, with phenomena. 
There is a part, our knowledge organization is organized like his logic. It is a part and a whole, and the whole is more than its part, and the whole realizes the ends of the parts. This ontology determined by the fact that each entity is a part of the whole. So, um, so it de determines its end. And this is where we have to come out because this is not an ontology of possibilities. You know, this is an ontology that uh, re uh, gives it itself a reinterpretation. So in regard of what we become, the ends of our activities within this old ontology are already and essentially defined. We are always have been seen to being part of something and determined within a certain kind of order, dependent on very often on the phenomena. So fa famously, only to give an example and to step further, Aristotle defined the cherry tree is to have cherries, the knife is to cut, and the wife is to give birth. Um, and the slave, uh, the duty of the slave is to serve, of course. So this box-like organization of our reality defined our century science. It created the hierarchies of knowledge and it created our encyclopedical thinking, how we go along in knowing about something. Um, so um, each plant and each animal and person has been pressed into this box, the females and the males, the stupid and so on. And we know that this box like thinking has cut off a lot of other possibilities. Of course, there has been a lot of critique against Aristotle. Uh, um, as it is also complicated to add something new into this uh, uh, kind of ontology. The new things in this kind of ontology have been exploited by analysis, but not in a synthetical uh, manner. The critique against the Aristotelian ontology has always been loud and women spoke out against it. The box-like ontology made it difficult to be different to the rule of this box ontology. The being different has been the exception to the rule. So the cherry tree that does not bear cherries and the knives that do, that do not cut and the hearts that do not beat and the women who have no children are exceptions from that rule. So the question is now, what new concepts we are facing in the future instead of these old uh, box knowledge. So up to now, the human subject has been the interpreter of nature and this is no longer the fact. So the human being is no longer the only and similar knowledge driver. We move from the binary knowledge, the binary knowledge which is between the subject and the object, now to this triangular uh, knowledge dimension. So the uh, bin binary no uh, model of knowledge uh, and cognition is replaced as the artificial intelligence produces and contributes its knowledge to the binary structure of the subject and the object. From now on, we find ourselves into a world of three knowledge compo components. Beyond the observer and the object, there is this third element. So, um, so there is a lot to be said about and, and, and uh, um, um, yeah, we are no longer constrained. This is the important thing, I think, that we have to understand to the relation of the actor in the news provider. And, um, and this uh, knowledge generation by the information machine. So this is now the point. As we are now in three, this new knowledge generation by the information machine, that is the in, uh, artificial intelligence, attacks also 
our anthropocentric superiorism. It challenges conventional beliefs that we have created the world or the world of our knowledge, and that uh, uh, there are alternatives to the interpretation that we have given to the world, because this artificial uh, uh, knowledge machine gives different interpretations of the world. It puts different relations and different interrelatednesses between the things and the entities this machine is uh, talking about or, or giving knowledge about. So the box knowledge was never sufficient to explain the world as it could be. It only described the world as it is. It was, uh, it, this box knowledge uh, could not describe the world as a constant process, and it could not describe the possibilities that there are. Artificial intelligence, however, can us now provide with this world of possibilities. So, however, of course, not all possibilities, but with many more possibilities than we have been able to think about up to now. The machine knowledge covers a reality that reveals astonishing structures and environments and surprisingly binds together what has never been put together in our knowledge up to now. So we learn to see the world in a different way. Algorithms, as we know, act partly independently and they and are connecting similar and are producing connections and similarities. Sometimes the most stupid and the most crazy ones, and sometimes surprisingly new ones, and giving new functions to things that we never connected to each other. Following from this, we are enforced to um, proceed differently in the future than we did before. As we discover parallels and we notice overlaps among things that we judge to be repellent and contrarian in our box world uh, existence. All is turned or many things are now turned upside down and our perspective becomes multi-dimensional. So we are, the, the last part of my talk is now to say how this new epistemology nests us differently in our world as we find ourselves in a completely different kind and way of being interrelated. And yeah, this is also a new way of reconceptualizing the values of our world. The information, so uh, the new epistemology, uh, new triangular epistemology that nests us differently in nature and society. The information providing machines are not only partners in our lives. Our tasks uh, are, are not only partner, um, okay. Our task is to move forward in shaping our understanding of the world on the basis of this new epistemology that is based on the fact that diversity becomes the cause of well being and flourishing as we are re ontologizing our world uh, by this new epistemology. Algorithmic methods, new ways of knowledge aggregation, and changing assemblages of knowledge clusters re ontologize our world. Instead, in boxes, we find ourselves in a world of new completely new interrelations and therefore also of new opportunities. But it is not only the technical variants that will allow us to treat our diseases more precisely and to define the needs of a, on a different level. This way of new epistemology will also change in a crucial way the impacts on our social life. 
course, it supports us to learn to understand much better of how entities are dependent on each other. We will learn to understand the special value of E and singular entities of individuals in very different ways. So our knowledge is growing, but individuality and specificities will grow in value. This is exactly what happens when you understand that the rainforest uh, uh, is, need, uh, is needed for the atmosphere and the minerals and so on. So you need now the tiniest place in the Philippines and the most, uh, um, you know, the tiniest sums of any minerals for the world because we understand via this knowledge uh, procedure the importance of the smallest things and of the smallest species in this world, in this world of interrelatedness. In the world we are now understanding being interconnected and it is the wisdom of these machines that we learn that diversity is a value in itself, that this kind of diversity and being different enriches our knowledge and this diversity knowledge, I want to make it clear against the box knowledge, it is not hierarchical. The hierarchical knowledge, you know, is no longer for, of use for us with this new machines, because now the diversity is of use for us, ourselves, for our interconnectedness, and also for to feed our machines with the good knowledge. So diversity itself becomes a value that enriches the knowledge and finally opens new insights to old problems as it brings to our understanding new relations. We cannot get enough now within this new epistemology from diversity. The limits of our understanding is now our knowledge and it has not always been so, because in earlier times, the exclusion of diversity was through the proof of knowledge and of the limited knowledge. But now it is the contrary. We face the uh, limitedness diversity and the limiting factor to understand diversity is now our uh, understanding. Yeah. So it is absolutely, it has become the contrary. The world must now appear new to us. Nature must now appear new to us. It is no longer the object that we exploit for our interests in the hierarchy of knowledge. We leave the anthropocentric peak of habitude and understanding. Nature is where we are nested in. It is an important and necessary part of ourselves and bears so many elements we have in common. It is no longer treated as an object subjected to our will and power. We are tied to it as it is a vivid resource of knowledge growth. The more we know, the fewer hindrances and frontiers arise between the utmost differences. The more extensive and more diverse basic of our knowledge is, the more comprehensive is what we know. With the new methods, we got the possibility of reconceptualizing our world, our understanding of science, nature, humans in the age of AI. It serves to overcome the units that confine our world into hierarchical orders that do not allow us to see the richness of what it, of what it is, but uh, uh, of what it is, but survive to establish the dominion of the box-like agents. The turn from a primary hierarchy and function-driven into a primarily knowledge-driven ontology comes along with an ontology of mutual interrelations. There is no place for humanity's supremacy over nature and the cosmos, 
and certainly not one for a hierarchy of genders and races. We are going towards a new understanding of science while we move towards a new understanding of interrelatedness. It is an attack against the old logic and the traditional kind of philosophical ontologies. Binary ontologies and semantics will vanish and we will start to understand that no longer we are in two, the knower and the known, but in three. This is us, there is nature, and there is the artificial intelligence. Three components of knowledge define in the conditions of truth and belief for the future. Thank you.